Hello everybody. Welcome back to 10 Minute Review. <laughs> this is Freya. I'm Jason. And we're bringing you today's video. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We, uh, we're a small family channel just trying to have fun. We love to bring you guys books and authors and things for you guys to read and be entertained by. So please, like and subscribe. We'd really, really appreciate all that support. So for today, Freya and, well, Freya went and hit. So I will be bringing you a series. I'm going to talk about a series. And it's an excellent series. Now, this is one of the rare ones where I'm not going to talk about a lesser-known author, an indie author, or you know somebody I just kind of stumbled across on on uh, on Facebook I'm, or Amazon. I'm going to talk about a, a big, 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 big author um, and one of his primary series, but he's got quite a few of them. I want to talk about Orphan X series by Greg Hurwitz. Now, I'm going to try and break it down into my four usual categories, but. I might get distracted or <laughs> go off on tangents as I tend to do because we just love talking about these books. So the Orphan X series, the world is pretty e easy to describe because it's our world. It's our world with a few little twists. Um, it's it's you know modern times, um, our world, but the the shadowy secret organizations type of of thing. You know your military organizations and your civilian organizations and your your CIA's and your CIA adjacents and your your you're just imagine if you took best way to describe this world would be imagine if you took our world combined it with say James Bond's world because you got you need your evil organizations um, plus the born books um, because you got to have your government organizations and um, along with uh, eh, John Wick would be a bad example but uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith your civilian organizations. That's kind of what you've got. You, you've got this this book or this series that at first does not start out dealing with with these these huge global things, but does build into it um, with all these various shadowy organizations and shadowy people and powerful people and powerful groups and governments and so on and so forth. Um, now the main character, the main character, it, it basically it follows one person, Evan Smoke. Now it's not spelled S M O K E. It's S M O. -E. I believe Evan Smoke. Now he is a that that's a pseudonym, of course. Uh, Evan Smoke is an assassin. He is a government trained assassin. He comes from a program where they took orphans and they they train them into assassins. And then, like many thriller books like this, he breaks off onto his own. He goes rogue. He develops a conscience. Um, if he didn't already have one to begin with, the way Evan is written is definitely very very um, very good guyish. Um, so, Evan Smoke. Now he is Orphan X. There is an or there was an Orphan A, an Orphan B, an Orphan C, an Orphan D. I mean, just orphans everywhere. You've got an orphan. You get an orphan. You get an orphan. An orphan for everybody. They they it was full of orphans. They all had their their letter designations. And unlike many of the books, uh, many of the thrillers and tropes within the this uh, um, type of of genre subgenre of thriller, uh, Evan doesn't isn't you know the best of the best of all the orphans you know he's not he's not the 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 greatest orphan to ever make it through the program with the highest marks and so on and so forth but he's good he's good he's one of the best um they make it pretty clear and, and pretty real world that it, it's actually kind of difficult to say who would be the best so the series starts out with with evan operating kind of as the equalizer basically he's a he's a shadowy guy that tries to help people that have no other recourse, no other way of getting any help. There's nothing, that, there's nobody that can save them except for this mysterious agent uh, in a way. He doesn't, he doesn't portray himself as an assassin. He's an agent. He's a spy. He's born, um, who of course was an assassin. But he's, he's a cross between born, James Bond, and Triple X, if that makes any sense. Um, he's... He, he, he definitely has the skills to do a lot, but mostly it's his planning. And that's one of the things that's really, really great about the book. So plot-wise, you know, he starts out, again, as kind of the equalizer. He's, he's helping people. He's saving people. The, the little man, the everyday man, you know, get a guy out of gang territory, uh, get a guy out of gang, um, rescue a kidnapped uh, child, uh, stop an evil businessman from his plot to bring down the company and cost, you know, people their life savings, stuff like that. And then as it builds, as he becomes somewhat more well-known, even though he tries to stand on the radar, 
the orphan programs start coming into play, other programs start coming into play, governments start coming into play, and these books end up getting broader and broader in scale as he's, he's even thinking about retiring, but he's unable to because he keeps getting sucked back in. It's an old mentor or somebody shows up to try and kill him. It even goes so far as he actually has a meeting with the president. Of course, he has to break into the White House to do it. And, and that's the plots. The plots, as the books definitely grow upon themselves. The series is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. What I really like about the Orphan X books versus a lot of the, the thrillers, and, and especially the espionage th thrillers, I uh, think of, say, you know, your Vince Flynn's, your Brad Thor's, is that uh, in the Orphan X books, he comes across, Evan Smoke comes across as supremely skilled, less for his ability to just barrel right in, and more for his planning. Those, the other books, and the, all, all these other great, fantastic, incredible authors, they definitely show a lot of planning and, and a lot of thought, but not to the level that the Orphan X books do. Evan and, and the Orphan X series, they really cover how he plans things out so detailed and tries to account for every single twist. Anything that can happen, he tries to figure out a way to prevent it from happening or how he's going to respond to it. And that's why he does these massive operations by himself because he manages to boil them down to the most simple things and put things into place earlier on to get them handled before he ever makes his way into the lion's den. As far as the writing style goes, writing style is awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Again, I have to give callbacks to, say... The Bourne books, as far as action goes, as far as a little bit of action goes, um, although because Bourne tends to be a little bit more old school in its, in its writing, the action is a little bit more wordy, whereas with the Orphan X, he's, he's definitely wordy and descriptive, but the action flows very, very well. Might actually have to go back to Brad Thor, Vince Flynn, even John Ringo, as far as how the action can flow. The, the, um, the thinking and the planning of it tends to call back a little bit more to Ludlum and, and David Morrell, Maxim, stuff like that. Awesome, awesome, awesome series. So if you like thrillers, if you like espionage thrillers, if you like um, just thrillers in general, and you like any of the authors that I've mentioned and you have not read Greg Hurwitz's Orphan X series, after you hit the like and subscribe button, slap yourself for not having read these, and then go read the Orphan X series by Greg Hurwitz. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye now.